So this video would have been uploaded and done days ago. I then got a bunch of comments, like one after the other, I got a bunch of comments back to back. People saying things about how they love the content I'm making about touring because it's a real genuine reflection of what touring is like, especially as a sound person, especially in theater, because that's not very well documented in other places. And because of that, I then had to sit down today, refilm this beginning rant. Not only did the previous like intro and talking point that I did for this video just kind of not feel right, I don't think I articulated my feelings very well because I was still in the midst of them. Please excuse the fluctuating lighting that we've got going on. I'm in a hotel room right now. Why am I in a hotel room right now? I'm in Adelaide actually, I have left Perth. I wanted to talk about my feelings about touring. When I originally thought about doing this little series talking about like my favorite places that I went and things that I did in cities, I was thinking the hype about getting to go to a bunch of different places and how cool that is. But I wasn't thinking about the actual reality of touring and how difficult it can be. And this city was a huge lesson for me. So I think that has inspired a new part to these videos that I'm gonna do in every city, which is like, my feelings about being in the city, how that chunk of the tour went, where I'm at mentally, emotionally, physically with being on tour. If you are new here and you have no idea what I'm talking about, my name is Monique. I'm a live entertainment tech in Australia. I've worked in all different parts of the industry, but at the moment, the last couple of years, I have been touring as a part of the sound team in commercial, commercial? In commercial music theater. Big shows, think Hamilton, Come From Away, Phantom of the Opera, those kind of shows. At the moment, I'm working on Tina the Tina Turner musical, and I cannot stress enough to you before I talk about this chunk of the tour that I fucking love my job. I love my job so much. I love this show and I love our crew, but I think that there are conversations to be had around maintaining a work-life balance when you're in a place where you have no fucking idea where anything is, you don't know a lot of people there, and you are just trying to get by, and your closest, most comfortable people are your co-workers. For a little bit of context, we were in Perth for eight weeks. A bunch of those were like pre-production. Was it eight or was it more? I think it was eight. It was around eight. I had never ever been to Perth. This was my first time coming to Perth, which was really exciting, but I really struggled in this city. Not 100% necessarily because of the city itself, but just where I was at mentally with being on tour. This is our first kind of like away chunk for like 10 months, almost a year we were in Sydney and I've spent like seven or eight years of my adult life in Sydney. I'm very familiar with Sydney. I have a lot of friends there. All of my family live close to Sydney. And I think that's an important thing to note about how comfortable I was in Sydney and how easy it was to maintain the work-life balance when I had life outside of work that was very accessible and easy to get to. I think the kind of touring we do, the length of the stints in the touring we do, is not something that I could have ever been prepared for. Because growing up, my only perception and idea of touring was bands who do a show in a different city every night and you're traveling the country together and traveling the world together and you're never in one place for very long. Everything is exciting. Everything is like the first time you've been there and the last time you'll be there. The kind of touring that we are doing with these shows is we move and we sit down somewhere for like two months, two to six months, which is enough time for everything to still be with like a, a silver lining of panic where you're like, shit, I don't have a lot of time here and I have to make the most out of it. With my few days that I have off while we're here, what am I gonna do to make the most of being here? And long enough that you need to maintain some kind of actual life schedule at the same time. Your living conditions can greatly impact how much you can do anything. And that was a lesson that I really learned this time as well. I went into this leg of the tour saying that I wanted to save as much money as possible Possible, especially because I knew I'd be getting tattooed while I was in Perth and that was gonna cost a little bit of money. I made a whole video about getting tattooed in Perth. Go and watch it if you haven't checked it out. But where you live impacts your quality of sleep, your ability to meal prep, your proximity to other people that you might wanna be spending time with and how easy it is to go and do social things on your days off, how easy it is for you to get to work and get away from work. All of these things impact your quality of life. And I decided on this leg of the tour that I wanted to save as much money as possible. And so I picked quite a cheap option by just staying in the room that was spare in the house of a friend of a friend. They were amazing and so welcoming to me, but I didn't consider the fact that the people who were living in the house work a like nine to five lifestyle of employment. They were up at like 5.36 every day and they were in bed by the time I got home. 
which meant that I would have to come home and I felt compelled to like immediately go to bed after tiptoeing around and doing the things that I needed to do to get ready for bed. Whereas normally I would stay up for a couple of hours after work because not many people who finish at five go to bed at six. So I already felt this huge shift in my life schedule that I like to keep anyway. And I felt uncomfortable in the times that I was at home because I felt like I was tiptoeing around all the time. I'm somebody who in general just really likes to live alone and my schedule is chaotic enough that I really need kind of freedom to do what I need to do when because of my work hours. I very much learnt on this leg that I need a lot more privacy than what I had during this run and that spending more money for that would be incredibly worth it for my quality of life which then impacts my ability to go and do anything else. I also just want to clock that I'm aware of the massive privilege it is to be traveling for work, to have the opportunity to go and see cities that you've never seen before, to go places you would never otherwise go. That is a massive, massive privilege and one that usually is so exciting to me. And I always go into a city with an open mindset of being excited to be there and see what it's like. I love just being in a new place and seeing what it is like to be there. But I also think it's incredibly fair to say that not every city is compatible with every person based on what they like to do and the things that they're looking for in the place that they live. For example, if you're someone who lives in the country and likes a quiet lifestyle, doing a show in the center of Sydney would probably make you fucking miserable because it's all of the things that you don't like and all of the things that you do like are missing. Perth was a little bit like that for me. The main thing people are gonna say when you go to Perth is that you need to go to the beaches. I hate the beach. I'm not a beach person. I went a couple of times just to go and to see the sunset on the water, which was beautiful, but I don't like swimming. I'm not a huge swimmer. Also, while we were there, I got tattooed multiple times, so I couldn't swim anyway. The beaches were very hard to get to. I found that in Perth in general, the public transport was quite unreliable and a little bit sketchy. That was something in particular that made me immediately not feel very comfortable in Perth because being someone who grew up in the country and didn't get their license for a whole bunch of reasons, moving to the city, moving into the middle of Sydney felt like independence. The ability to get myself where I needed to go without relying on anybody else was was a huge point of independence for me and to have that taken away and to have to rely on other people giving you lifts places or spending lots of money on Ubers and things like that is a huge thing and really impacted how much I enjoyed being there because it was really difficult to get places. All of the places that people would say that you should go and spend time are outside of the city where we were staying. We were staying obviously near the theater and everyone else was saying, you need to go to Fremantle, you need to go to Scarborough, you need to go to all these other places which are very much outside of the city. My coworkers, so many people that I work with fucking loved Perth. They absolutely loved Perth. They had cars or they were living close to the beach. They're beach people and they were there every single day. They were loving being in Perth. This is just my experience. I cannot stress enough that if you love Perth, I fucking love that for you. I just wanted to be honest about what my time there was like, because I think that reflects in the things that I did and the things that I enjoyed. And also I think it is just, I think it's a nice heads up. If somebody had communicated those kinds of things with me before I went to Perth, I could have had time to plan accordingly in order of what I thought I needed. My final like huge thing that I think really impacted my comfort being in Perth was at the time, Western Australia was three hours behind the East Coast of Australia. Meaning that by the time I woke up in the morning, everyone that I love and would wanna be keeping contact with were already at work in the middle of their work day, couldn't talk. By the time I went to work is just before they'd be wrapping up. So they couldn't talk to me then either. By the time I finished work, they were in bed. So it was really, really hard for me to keep contact with my friends and with my family. There wasn't really an easy way for me to fly back and see them because the flight takes so long and also because it is on the more expensive side. So going eight weeks without being able to go and see my friends or my family or to really be able to have really long, deep chats with them really impacted my mental space. It made me really sad. Keeping in touch with my life and my family and my friends outside of work is already something that I struggle with when I'm working in this industry because of the hours and the nature of the job. So to do that and then to be in even more extreme circumstances of isolation from them was incredibly difficult and I'm really glad that that part of the tour is over. Taking a weekend every now and then to go back and be with those people makes it so much easier to be here. The perks of Perth though, there were perks of being in Perth. One of my major perks of being in Perth was that I do have a couple of friends who moved to Perth and I have not seen them in years. One of my greatest friends moved to Perth, like I think we figured out it was about five years ago and I have not seen her since. 
since and getting a chance to catch up with her was so so special to me as well as this obviously as you've seen in my other video I got tattooed a bunch there are a lot of incredible artists in Perth and in Western Australia in general who don't get the chance to make it across to the East Coast as often as one would like and by one I mean me I got tattooed by two people while I was in Perth both of them I've been tattooed by before about seven or eight years ago when they were on the East Coast and I was there I finally got my other leg like really started I tattooed my knee which was so exciting I'm so in love with both of the tattoos that I got while I was there if there's anything that I did do in Perth it is eight I went and ate at a lot of really great places a lot of great cafes more often than not kinky lizard which was my favorite cafe while we were there a lot of really great restaurants a wine drinker. I made sure that I went on a wine tour while I was there. I went with two friends from work and it was so much fun. I will leave a link below to the tour that we went on because it was such a fantastic tour. It was $140 per person to go to like three or four wineries, a chocolate factory, a brewery, and we had lunch at a really great place as well. There was a small group that was able to go of nine people. If you can pull together nine people from your company or from your friend group who want to go, I would recommend booking that super far in advance and just going with your people. The group that we went with was super lovely and our guide was heaps of fun.
Obviously, I did go and check out the beaches, and even if you are not a beach person, I would recommend seeing the sunset on the beach at least once because it is incredibly beautiful. As I said, now I'm in Adelaide. I've just gotten to Adelaide. I'm preparing for another eight weeks of being in Adelaide. And I think things are gonna be better for my brain moving forward, being in Adelaide. One, because I have already been to Adelaide before and I love this city. I have a bit of an attachment to Adelaide. I have a lot of fond memories here and of working here. I'm already familiar with places that I like to go and things that I like to do here. I've already been to a gig. I went to a gig already. I'm living with two really great friends from the show who I did both Phantom and Tina with. As well as this, I'm now only half an hour behind my friends and family, making it very much easier to talk to them. And on weekends, I could go home. And that, I think, will give me things to look forward to during the season. Also, while I'm here, one of my favorite bands is casually playing here on a Tuesday night, which is a night we have off. I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity to go to Perth. I never would have gone there if it was just something that I had to do by myself, to be honest. And like I said, it is an incredible privilege to get to go to multiple cities in the country you live in and pick apart what you like and don't like about them. It is not lost on me, the privilege in doing that. But I think one of the biggest things that you learn when you start working in an entertainment industry job is that you are both incredibly lucky to do what you do and it is also incredibly difficult for various reasons. If you are somebody from Perth who has more of an insight into more great places that I could have gone for the people who are about to go there and who are watching this, please leave them in the comments. As I said, this video is a couple of days late because I had to refilm this portion of the chat. Also, just in general, I think moving forward, your best bet for finding out when videos go live is to turn on the notifications for the channel so you get a notification when I upload and also to be following me over on Instagram so that you know when something goes live, I'll typically post about it there. One of the other things that is stressful about touring is that I have limited time, limited places I can film, limited places that I can edit. My full-time job has to take priority over me making these videos, especially because they don't generate any income source for me at the moment. So as much as it pains me, sometimes I have to put videos on the back burner. Also, I still want them to be good. Like I still wanna be proud of the videos that I'm putting up. Those comments that were left that reminded me about the real view of touring in a show like this and in a workplace like this reminded me that I'm not just making videos for the sake of having an upload every week. I am trying to share that aspect of life with you so that hopefully the next generation of people moving into this industry have it a little bit easier and have a little bit of empowerment from some knowledge that they otherwise wouldn't have. So like I said, make sure that you are A, subscribed, B, notifications are on for the channel, and C, following me on Instagram so that you see when videos go live. Let me know if there's anything that I should be doing in Adelaide. Let me know your favorite places in Adelaide. I'm going there next, I'm here now. Also, let me know if there are any other videos that you'd like to see around like the touring lifestyle, because I can do that for you. Also, go check out the Girls on Tour Book Club. Read with us, thanks.